Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. This time on Voice of the Sea, Ed Sichon of Maui Aquaponics. So what have been some of the sort of the struggles as you set up your system and then maybe your successes too? Uh, yeah. <laughs> You, you talked with our with our scientists, so you know the the struggles fr uh, from that end. Um, from the business end, it, it's it's just uh, capital. Uh huh. Um, it, it's you know it costs some money to get started, and then uh, you've got what we refer to as the sun tax. Everything in Hawaii is much more expensive than the mainland, and you know pipes and building materials and pumps and electric and just expensive stuff. But on the other hand, um, you know, food prices are a lot higher. So when we get to the point where we're generating revenues, um, you know, we, we feel we can recoup the investment we've got in and hopefully then some. Uh huh. And so this aquaponics then is, is just one side of, of your vision. And tell me a little bit about the offshore plans that you have for aquaculture. Um, something that Hawaii and, and the United States really needs is is producing their own fish uh, we you know in my opinion we shouldn't be importing relying on importing 80 plus percent of our seafood from other countries uh -huh. um, it's dangerous um, not only from a food safety perspective uh, from the, the the safety of the actual product but uh, again going back to 2008 during that food spike india shut off their grain exports to russia just shut them off. Russia depended on India for 20% of their grain. Um, we're seeing that with fish. Fiji and Tonga, a big supplier of fish to Hawaii, they're starting to, the scarcity uh, is occurring there and there it's more difficult to get fish in here and more expensive. Okay, so I know that there's some issues with, with types of farm fish, for example, farmed salmon or one of the fish that a lot of the watch groups tell you to avoid. So what is the difference between um, something that's being farmed and that might be detrimental to the environment to um, the types of systems that you're looking at, at putting out? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that salmon can't be farmed okay. more responsibly. Um, what the, the stigma that we carry with us is um, many think that what we're trying to accomplish offshore of Hawaii is similar to what was occurring offshore of the Northwest and the Northeast coast of the United States 20 or 30 years ago. Uh -huh. um, some bad practices, um, too close to shore, too shallow water, not strong enough current. Uh, the big one probably is just too densely stocked. Um, th those are all reasons for disease and pollution. So, um, you know, we feel the answer is, and we can back that up with a lot of studies, is to go further from shore, deeper water, stronger current, larger cages, and uh, much, much less density, stocking density. Um, our goal uh, is to stock our cages offshore someday at 15 kilograms per cubic meter. Um, it's not uncommon for a, a commercial salmon farm to stock at 40 or 50 kilograms per cubic meter. Oh, wow. Meter. And then, you know, um, they do, they do administer uh, antibiotics to the fish. You know, you got your technicians actually injecting each indiv individual fish. Um, but a lot of that is the practices. And so what kind of fish do you envision growing offshore? Our target is the opaka opaka. Uh, it's been done uh, on Oahu at HIMB uh, for about 10 years. They've been working on the larval rearing mm -hmm. and they've come a long way. It's got a ways to go, but um, we feel with the, with the right resources that we can breed opaka opaka in commercial numbers and, uh, and raise it. So then would you work with the folks at, at HIMB, the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology, to rear those larvae and, and take them from them, or would you actually set up your own hatchery here on Maui? Um, both. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. Um, HIMB, uh, I, I believe they actually have been running into some funding problems, so uh, right now they're sitting on their brood stock, uh -huh. and they may not be able to do larva runs this coming season uh, unless some budget some funding comes through. Um, so they, they would be a good source of eggs while we um, work 
you know, collect brood stock and, and they need a year or two to become mature uh -huh. and start producing themselves. And then you take them just the way that you have here and put them from the, those small um, one or two year old fish and put them offshore to grow in a, an open ocean aquaculture pen. Correct. Grow approximately one year um, and then harvest and uh, you know, there's no doubt there's a market for the fish. So. Yeah, <laughs> they're very tasty. We, we like to say we've got the beginning, we're, we're started, and we've got the end. We, we can sell the product, it's just everything in the middle, which is uh, very capital intensive and a lot of permitting, a lot of public meetings. Um, it, it, it seems like when people first hear about a project, completely against. That's, they tie us into salmon farming. Um, there's some lobbying groups in Washington that don't help the situation. Um, but when they hear our side of the story and, and sh see our data, independent data from the, from the existing farms here in Hawaii, like, oh, well, they didn't say that on that website. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> this is pretty clean. You know, this is pretty responsible. Um, one of the things that, you know, you come from a business background, but I hear you talking about all this science and you're talking about current and water quality and fish growth. And so how did you get familiarize yourself with the, the scientific ideas? Uh, working with a lot of marine biologists, uh, especially Chris, who's got experience worldwide. Um, the farm we're proposing and the two existing farms here in Hawaii are, are almost not considered commercial scale in, in other areas such as Europe or the Caribbean or Asia because they're so small. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yet we're constantly labeled as big factory fish farms. Um, you know, someday we might be able to produce 100,000 pounds of fish a week. That's nothing. That's such a small dent in the, in the demand in the United States. Um, the trick is again, do it responsibly. But yeah, working with, uh, working with people in the industry is really where I've got my knowledge so far. Um, I don't claim to be a marine biologist, uh, but my job is to bring good people in, such as Chris. Mm -hmm. So it's a real collaborative effort. Absolutely. Business, uh, science, uh, a lot of engineering that goes into it. So. Right, that's the other thing that's really impressive is just the the feet in and of itself to move the water from the tank to tank to the plants that are growing and, and to build the structures. You've got to have that engineering side and to be able to accomplish it yes. efficiently. And a lot of it, with aquaponics for instance, uh, a lot I've learned is, is gravity is a very powerful tool. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when electricity is 32 cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah, uh, I, I noticed your whole system actually, if we look back up to the top, we're, we're sitting on a hillside here so we we start at the very top with the brood stock and of the fish, and then we're down here with the plants, and they're just everything's rolling downhill. Yes, um, Dr. Ricosi, I got to give him a plug here. <laughs> <laughs> he says aquaponics should be a one-pump system. So even way up here on the roof, we're still 15 to 20 feet below our fish tanks. So that water is going to flow downhill, come back up here. <laughs> and go back into the one sump, which one pump uh, sends it back to the fish. The University of Hawaii Sea Grant College program focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Why is Sea Grant? The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG has been providing quality educational programs and services for over 40 years, serving students, teachers, parents, educators, and experts around the world and here in Hawaii. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is a dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. Teaching ocean science concepts through the disciplines of physics, chemistry, biology, and ecology. 
Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now available freely online. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org. Turn your love of the ocean into a lifelong career. Join NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as we unlock the secrets in the deep oceans, track rapidly moving storms, model climate trends, protect and preserve our marine resources, and so much more. It's all in a day's work at NOAA. Find a career that makes a world of difference, enriching life through science, service, and stewardship. NOAA.